Welcome, today we're going to be taking apart an Acer Aspire 5. This particular model is the A515-54. And to begin, we're just going to need a small Phillips bit. This is a 2.5 millimeter. And please be advised, we're going to be leaving the display assembly as a complete unit. Um, but I'll give you a quick rundown on how to remove the bezel. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and flip it over and we're going to remove the bottom case screws here all along the uh, bottom case here. All right, once you get those bottom case screws out, we're gonna go ahead and find the little seam here between the bottom case and the palm rest and just take our spudger some other thin tool and just go along and start popping that bottom case up and once you got part of it lifted then you can just kind of lift it the rest of the way off all right so now we got a good view of the inside of the laptop and as usual we're going to try to uh, remove the battery first. So it looks like it's, yeah. So it's partially held in um, apparently by some case screws. So all we need to do to remove it is get that little connector out of there. And with this type, you can just take your fingernails and get them on each one of the little tabs on either side of the connector and work it out. That will allow you to remove the battery. All right, Let's zoom in a little bit here. All right, so we got our top ram stick. We're just gonna spread those little retainer bars on either side, and that will allow us to remove the ram. And for the Wi-Fi card, um, looks like this one had one antenna already disconnected person probably did not get a very good Wi-Fi signal. Okay, so once you have those antennas removed, then we're gonna remove the little screw. Wi-Fi card is gonna pop up and then we can just pull it out. All right, uh, next up will be the SSD. So same as the Wi-Fi card, we'll just do the one screw. And the SSD drive is going to pop up, and then we can just pull it out of the slot. And this is a SATA M2 style SSD. So if you get a new SSD, you want to make sure it has that kind of style connector, with the two notches. All right, while I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and free up this pram battery, because we are going to be disconnecting the motherboard. So we'll leave that with the motherboard. And now we can go ahead and pull that fan assembly. And same kind of connector. We're just gonna wiggle those two, uh, with those two notches, wiggle the connector out. And we can remove the screws. All right, now we can go for the heatsink. Uh, it looks like there's only three screws and it doesn't matter which order you remove them, but when you tighten them, um, it's best to do it in the order that is stamped on the uh, little metal parts of the heatsink. As far as removal, it doesn't matter. It's just to uh, evenly tighten it down. And we'll remove that heatsink. All right, it appears the motherboard is partially held in place by the, um, the hinge screws. So I think our next step is just gonna be to remove the uh, display assembly from the palm rest. So we're just gonna open up that display assembly all the way. And for this type of connector for the video cable, you just flip it up, remove the cable, and then flip that retainer back down. 
So we got the video cable on this side free. We have the Wi-Fi antennas on the other side free. So now we can go ahead and remove those, the rest of the display hinge screws. Alright, now we have those screws out, we can just give it a little wiggle and the display will come free from the palm rest. We can go ahead and set that aside for now. Alright, so while we're here we'll go ahead and remove the in-out board. Just one screw and then same type of connector, just flip that little, that little bar up and then you can remove that in-out board. Alright, so it looks like the only other thing left is the motherboard. So we're going to go along the uh, motherboard and just disconnect any more ribbons that are connected. So same type of connector, just flip up on that little retainer and then we're gonna flip it back down so it doesn't get damaged. And that small one there, just pull it straight out. Looks like we have some tape for the keyboard. And with this type of retainer, uh, the plastic bit right here has to slide um, downwards or laterally, I guess. So once you have those little tabs pushed all the way out. It will release that ribbon and then we'll just kind of push those back into place. It looks like our last one over there is a flip up type. So we'll get that removed. And it looks like we are good to remove those motherboard screws. Alright, we'll give it one last check. Looks like we have all the ruins out. So we're going to lift up on the inner part of the motherboard and we're going to pull these ports out of the palm rest. Uh, oftentimes these ports will be partially pushed through the palm rest. Uh, so you need to kind of move the motherboard up and then outwards to free it from the palm rest assembly. And there we go. There is the motherboard. All right, so we'll take a closer look at the palm rest assembly. It looks like the keyboard is not replaceable. It's held in place by these little plastic rivets, kind of melted. Um, so it would be a real pain to try to replace that keyboard by itself. And the touchpad. It's got an interesting mounting. Uh, configuration here. So I don't see any screws. Uh, this actually might just be held in place by adhesive. Nope. So there's one uh, kind of a master screw up here at the top and once you get that out you should be able to uh, free that touchpad assembly but there there may be uh, Maybe adhesive in there that you might have to fight with, but the touchpad definitely looks replaceable and the keyboard does not. And the speakers are just held on by grommets here, so those look like they're really easy to replace. So that is it for the palm rest assembly. Alright, back to the display. So oftentimes the the way to get into this type of display is separating the front bezel from the back cover. And this looks like they have quite a bit of adhesive on this type of bezel here. So we'll give it a shot. So we'll basically you just get a little spudger and 
once we have the bezel partially popped up, uh, once you get it started, then you can just go around the, uh, the rest of the bezel and use your fingers to pop it up. All right, so a quick little peek inside. Um, the LCD is, looks like it's gonna be a real pain to replace. Um, now that we have this bezel up, I can see that there's no screws holding in the LCD, so it's, uh, it's most likely held on by some pretty strong adhesive in the back. Um, given that, I would definitely recommend replacing your LCD as an assembly instead of trying to just replace the panel itself uh, because you would need a heat gun and a lot of patience and even then there's a real good chance of breaking that LCD because it's only a couple millimeters thick. And I know that this bezel is also held on by some pretty strong adhesive on the bottom. Possibly. They usually are. Um, along the bottom strip, there's oftentimes some strong adhesive that is help holding it onto the screen assembly. So, as long as you work your way across, like really carefully, and um, kind of separate the adhesive with your fingers, then you should be able to get that bezel off no problem. But as I said before, the screen assembly is going to be held uh, complete but I just wanted to give you kind of a heads up on how to remove that bezel. And then once you remove the bezel, you should be able to get to uh, the hinges if you need to replace them. But as far as the LCD, if your LCD is broken, um, I would definitely recommend against trying to replace it yourself because it's, it's gonna be pretty difficult on this model. So that's how you disassemble the Acer Aspire 5 series. And this particular model is the A515. So if this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.